Dan Schulman to Dick Vitale. Very glad you are with us. Carolina, 6-4 and four on the season. Huge front line, getting some good play inside. Miami just devastated by injuries this year. Four starters from a year ago. None of them healthy enough to play tonight. We'll see how they can handle North Carolina and all of their size. Miami has been playing people tough. But, Dick, they appear to have their hands full tonight as we take a look at the Carolina starting five brought to you by K Jewelers. And Dayron Sharp, Dick, is in the starting lineup for the third game in a row. He's coming off a terrific game against the Irish a few days ago. Yeah, he was super in that game, Dan. Had 25, and he was a dominant force inside. Size is going to be a big, big factor in this game in terms of when you look at North Carolina, big advantage there, as you said so well, all the injuries. But these kids have competed, Dan. They have competed very hard. The last two games, they had the basketball and a chance to win both yeah. games with Virginia Tech and Clemson. A look at the K Jewelers starting lineup for Miami. Keep an eye on Isaiah Wong, who is having a terrific year. The sophomore averaging almost 18 points per game. Uh, but unfortunately for Wong, that's him who is called for a charge right there. You mentioned the close losses, stick to Virginia Tech and Clemson. We're talking about a couple of ranked teams. Those are two very good teams that Miami played. And as you said, they played them right down to the final possession. Yeah, right to the last possession, had the ball, had a chance to win both those games. They really missed the kid likes, man. I would love to see yeah. him play. The little guy has been such a tremendous player out with an ankle injury. Kerwin Walton, a freshman who's shooting the ball extremely well recently for Carolina. He's moved into the starting line of the recent games. He misses the three, and then Leaky Black knocks one down. Black coming off the game-winning bucket against the Irish on Saturday, and he's got the first points of this one. Yeah, he was a slasher in that game. Scrolling nine seconds to go to give North Carolina that win at home. Three-point shooting is an area they're really hoping to improve on. That's one thing Roy Williams told us today. Reduce and neither one of these teams, sorry, Jack. Neither one of these teams shoots the three well at all, but they've both done much better the last couple of games, and we've got another call going against Miami. Nasir Brooks called for uh, just a bit too aggressive a move on the inside. Well, he's matched up right now, Dan, with Sharp on the inside. He's a transfer. Came in the way of the Bearcats Cincinnati. Had a lot of experience playing there. And he's going to have his hands full today with that front court. The runner will go for R.J. Davis, the freshman from White Plains, New York. Roy Williams has been moving guards in and out of his starting lineup. Davis came off the bench last game. Caleb Love was a the starter. They switch roles here tonight. Well, you know, one thing about both guys, they're super quick at the basketball. Davis goes from one end to the other. He goes downtown like you cannot believe. Really quick with the hoop. Yeah, North Carolina with the third-ranked freshman class coming into the season. Wave off the basket. That'll be a charge on Leaky Black. It is a six-man freshman class for Carolina. Some have played well. Some have not played up to the level of their capabilities. And Roy Williams is still trying to figure out all the pieces to the puzzle here. As you can see, they've got some terrific freshmen. Dayron Sharp playing very well, as we mentioned. But to be frank, Dick, they need more out of Caleb Love and R.J. Davis than they've gotten so far this season if they're going to get where they expect to get this year. Yeah, right. Those freshmen have to really, you know, get familiarity with shot selection, play the team defense. We talked about that with Roy today in our Zoom uh, conference. And I'll tell you this, that's an area I really feel that many, many freshmen have a tough time adjusting to. Ten-man rotation for Carolina, six of them freshmen. The freshmen are playing 51% of the minutes for the Tar Heels so far this year. A very familiar name in Garrison Brooks. You'll notice he's not in the game. He's coming off the bench for the third game in a row. Part of the changes for Roy Williams as Sharp turns it over. Hey, you talk about, you just mentioned Brooks. Think about this. He was preseason player of the year voted in the ACC. He's coming off the pine. Earl Timberlake gets Miami on the board three minutes into the game. He's a terrific freshman for the Hurricanes out of Washington, D.C. But a quick answer at the other end for Dayron Sharp. And that was number one on Jim Laranega's list today, Dick, was prevent the transition buckets for the Tar Heels. Yeah, he said definitely that. And number two, prevent the offensive rebounds. Easier said than done against Notre Dame. They had 21, 21 offensive rebounds to Notre Dame's three. Gonna watch this. He goes to the floor, catches the ball, 
rotates over, and Sharp around the basket is so, so tough. Stock going up and up for Dayron. Yeah. And maybe we should rephrase it, Dick. You can't prevent the transition buckets. You can't prevent the offensive rebounds. Maybe limit them would be a better way to phrase it if you're Jim Laranaga in Miami. Right. Contain it. Contain it. I mean, you look at that front court when you look at, well, there's Jimmy Laranaga right there. But you look at the front court of North Carolina. It's probably as good as any front court you'll see in America. I mean, we're not even talking about Walker Kessler. And a lot of people think that he has a chance to be a really heck of a player at North Carolina. Jumper by Black, a little bit short, and the rebound down to Timberlake. 6'5", physical, strong, tough guard. He's had an ankle injury. Even most of the guys playing for Miami have dealt with an injury of some sort so far this season. Timberlake played over at the Matha High School. He played with Hunter Dickinson, who's starring right now for the University of Michigan. I mean, Dickinson's been off the charts, averaging like 20 a game, about 10 rebounds a game, and they're undefeated right now, Juwan Howard's team. Yeah, they are really good. And, Dick, as you know, Juwan Howard's got the number one ranked recruiting class in the nation coming in next year to Ann Arbor. He was, he was the right hire man for his alma mater. I know Jalen Rose, Weber, and those guys are really excited to see their buddy do it so well down there in Ann Arbor. Timberlake gives it up. This is Matt Cross, a freshman from Beverly, Massachusetts, a terrific passer, and he finds Nasir Brooks for the jam. You know, he had seven assists in the last game. He was really terrific passing the ball. He made three big threes. But it, you know, they were so optimistic before the season when I talked to Jimmy Laranega, who's like a neighbor of mine. He's got a house right down the road. I'm going to tell you, he was so optimistic, thinking about Likes, thinking about Miller, thinking about Wartenberg, and those guys are not here. Yeah, Rodney Miller out for the year. Sam Wardenberg out for the year. Chris likes a badly sprained ankle, has not even gotten back on the court in practice as Brooks scores inside again. And also Cameron McGusty, who returned on the weekend from a hamstring injury, but is unavailable to play tonight. So that's four key players out for the Hurricanes. But again, as we mentioned, they just keep on battling, even though they're undermanned. Yeah, they really battle hard and compete because that's part of Jimmy Laranega's personality. They reflect that. And a nice jump hook. That's the go-to move for Dayron Sharp. He loves to get to the left shoulder, right-handed jump hook. And at his size, that's tough to stop. Very tough to stop. He's got good footwork down in the low post as well. The one area that they're not happy with is their defense we took North Carolina. Another example, the ball so easily entered to the post right there. Over the left shoulder right there for a quick score on the inside by Brooks. I'm gonna tell you, that is an area they're gonna have to work to improve on as a team defensively if they wanna be a contender. And a turnover to send us to the first media timeout of the game. Miami getting back into it. Carolina's lead down to one. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Progressive. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Visit Progressive.com. You must go and I must bide. But come ye back when is Jamie here? It's Sunday. In Miami, the Tar Heels with an early one-point lead down in Coral Gables against the Hurricanes. Glad you're along with us tonight. Dan Schulman and Dick Vitale. Glad to be bringing you college basketball. And as we mentioned, Dickie V, Jim Laranega's team really banged up. Not that they're using that as an excuse. They're playing as hard as they can, but they're really undermanned. Yeah, they really are. When you lose guys like <laughs> they lost Rodney Miller, for example, a big, strong inside guy. Chris likes their star. Is that with an ankle injury? I mean, one loss after another. But they keep competing. They keep fighting. And we indicated that when you think about how they went with two nationally rated teams, Virginia Tech and also with Clemson, and they battled them right to the last point. Look at this fighting hard. Three to four losses by four points or less. They had the ball in the last two games with a chance to win both games against the Hokies and against the Tigers of Clemson. Clemson came up short. How about the start Clemson is off to? Brad Brown now looks like he's got a terrific team in a conference this year, Dick, where nobody looks like they're going to, it's early, but nobody looks like they're going to pull away from everybody else. There are five ranked teams in the ACC right now, but they're all between 19 and 25. Nobody in the ACC is ranked higher than that. 
Yeah, that's really, we talked about that today with Roy Williams as well. I think when you look, take a look at the ranked clubs right here, but I think when it's all said and done, if the North Carolina kids buy into Roy's teaching on a defensive end and really do a better job of shot selection, I think North Carolina could be one of the real teams right up on top in the ACC. I really do. I know they started off 0-2, but you ready for this? They started off 0-2 also in the year 2009, and they won the national championship. 1997, they were 0-2. They went to the final four. So there's a way that they can regroup. And also think about the fact eight of their first 11 games have been away from Chapel Hill. And the ACC right now does not look to be as strong of a conference as the Big Ten or the Big 12 do. I think everybody would agree that in one order or another, those are the top two leagues. And probably the ACC slots in after that. Timberlake very short on the three. And Carolina trying to get down the floor as quickly as they can, as always. You know, Caleb Love sure, turns it over. I'm not certain you slot them in at number three. There's, I think the Big East is way better than people believe. Villanova and Seton Hall and Creighton, they're getting some good clubs in that league. Carolina in transition again. Andrew Playtech and a good job by Den Gak to slow him down. And Carolina turns it over yet again. Boy, they have been sloppy with the basketball. And that's been all year. That's been one of the real Achilles heels. Still alive with my late buddy Al McGuire. I'll tell you this. They have been sloppy with the basketball. And that's really been troubling to Roy. Carolina's turned it over six times already. Miami's coughed it up five times. And make it six wow. now, an even half dozen for both schools already. They said, hey, we want to get even with you guys. We're going to catch you. <laughs> they caught him. <laughs> and you see Carolina trying to go with the high-low. Brooks up top. They're always going to have two big guys in the game. Right now, it's Brooks and Sharp, although it looks like uh, Sharp may be heading to the bench. Roy Williams knows he's got a lot of good big guys, and they're going to pound that ball inside as much as they can tonight. Yeah, because shooting the perimeter shot early in the season has not been a strength of the Tar Heels. And Roy's been around. That's why he's been a Hall of Fame coach, knowing how to get the maximum out of your personnel. That's one of the keys in coaching. Analyze your people and then do things according to the strengths of your people. Exchange on a low post inside. Sharp the kick. Love passed up the shot. Playtech will take the three, and he will knock it down. The second three of the game in the early going for the Tar Heels. Well, he's a guy capable of shooting the three. There was a trend there early in his career. They said he was terrific in practice every day, shooting the three, and struggled at game time. He's going to become a key component of his team. He and Walt are making threes. And Miami turns it over yet again. We will step aside. Both teams struggling just to hang on to the basketball right now. Carolina's up five. Let's take a look at tonight's Wendy's Wooden Watch and Garrison Brooks, a preseason Wooden Award candidate, the preseason player of the year in the ACC, had a great year last year, started off pretty well this year, but the numbers have gone down in recent games. He's come off the bench now three games in a row, and Roy Williams, Dick, told us one of the reasons why is they've got other guys. He had to do everything last year. He got so many touches down in the post last year, but they've got Dayron Sharp, and of course they've got Armando Baycott, who's now a sophomore. They've got Walker Kessler. They get a lot of bodies on the inside. But, you know, last year they were like a two-man game offensively. You have Cole Anthony on the perimeter, and you have Garrison on the inside. But if they're going to be really good, he has to be much more dominant than he's been. He averaged last year 16.5 a game. He's a terrific offensive rebounder, and they say he's got a great attitude, that he's not a kid that's selfish at all. He'll do anything to help the team win, and I think we're going to start to see him really break out. The question is, how do you play all the bigs together? And that's what right. they're fighting to do, to figure out how do we play these guys all at one time. And you can't, so you got to rotate. Yeah, Brooks, Sharp, and Baycott all get pretty good minutes. Kessler, who just went one of two from the line, the freshman from Noonan, Georgia, he is not playing as much as the other three. He was a surprise to me going to North Carolina because his family has been so Georgia-bound. Great athletes the whole bit. But they think he's got an incredible future, everyone I talk to. Can't well, you teach can't that teach 7-1. Seven seven he's yeah. got you 7-1. That's a good start. And there he is altering a shot. And down with the rebound is Puff Johnson, the younger brother of former Tar Heel Cam Johnson. 
Huff, another member of the freshman class. Brooks has it rejected, gets it back, misses the jumper. And it is still Miami ball. You know, Carolina's been scoring off the turnovers that Miami's been committing. Miami's got to find a way to get a little more rhythm, a little more patient on the offensive end. Miami scoreless about the last three and a half minutes right now, and Nasir Brooks has six of their eight points on the night. They've taken nine shots, and they turned it over seven times. They get a shot off here. This one by Anthony Walker, a sophomore from Baltimore. It won't go. And they will battle for it and tie it up. Hey, coming up next on ESPN of the ESPN app, it'll be number six, Kansas, traveling to Fort Worth to take on the TCU Horned Frogs. It'll be really interesting, Dick, to see how Kansas starts that game after a 25-point home loss to Texas on the weekend. Well, they also say Marcus Garrett may not play. And you look at TCU, they got a nice combination with Nemhart and Samuel. That Nemhart, I think, leads the conference in scoring. Jamie Dixon's got a dangerous basketball team. Yeah, Nimhart at about 18 points per game. Samuel's a double-double guy. Big guy inside. Shot clock running down. Wong with a long jumper in and out. And the rebound down to Kessler. Carolina getting down the floor quickly. Johnson with an air ball on a corner three. Like you said earlier, his brother Cameron, man, could he shoot the rock? He's making oh himself a heck of a living. Nothing like guys that can shoot the basketball. Give me guys that can make shots. Yeah, Cam started at Pitt and finished up with a couple of years at Carolina. Now with the NBA with the Phoenix Suns. We've got a nice young team, by the way, Phoenix. Harlan Beverly again with a shot clock becoming a factor. And a strong drive on the baseline for Elijah Olaniyi. A transfer from Stony Brook, who was fouled hard and will head to the free throw line. He goes to the goal. Earns that, goes to the free throw line. You know, it's an amazing story with him. He didn't become eligible until all of a sudden, right before the Pittsburgh game, the NCAA mm -hmm. said everybody could be eligible that was sitting out, and he went to the starting lineup immediately. Had a nice career, though, at Stony Brook. It was literally like an hour and a half before the pit game. A guy who was first team all America East last year at Stony Brook averaged about 18 points per game. And they need all the healthy bodies that they have. Last name is Olaniyi, but he wants to honor his late mother Ruth. So he wears her last name, Adiboye, on the back of his jersey. Also want to send out, since you mentioned that right there, our sympathies out to Wanda, Roy Williams' wife, losing yes. her dad, 97 years of age. And Roy said he lived one great life for 95 years before getting ill. Caleb Love misses the three, and it's out of bounds back to Miami. Caleb Love, a top 15 recruit coming into Chapel Hill this year. And Roy Williams knows he's got a world of talent. But, you know, being a freshman point guard is a pretty tough job in college basketball. And uh, it's been a little bit better lately, but the shots are just not falling right now for Caleb Love. And, you know, it's human nature, Dick. You've been a dominant player through your high school career. You get to college, you struggle, your confidence takes a hit. And it takes a while to, for you to kind of find your footing again as Alaniyi knocks down a three. Yeah, we talked about that today again with Roy Williams. I think there's no doubt about it. You know, it's really interesting, Dan, you mentioned the top three teams in recruiting last year were Kentucky, Duke, and North Carolina. All three have struggled out of the gate compared to where people, you know, are accustomed to see them. And I think it's a lot because a lot of times these young kids have to adjust to playing the game, understanding what a good shot is, understanding how to help people out of it terms defensively communicate and do all those things it takes them a while yeah and you know what it's such a crazy disjointed year too and you always want to have experience but i i think experience benefits a team even more so in this kind of a year maybe than it does in a normal year you look at a team like wisconsin and how they never they never skipped a beat coming off the lockdown well, I think you make a great point there, Dan. I'll tell you why. And I always know you make great points. I tell you, that's why I love working with you, buddy. But let me tell you this, Dan. The reason is very simple. Practice sessions have not been the same. 
You didn't have the exhibition games. You didn't have all those cupcakes you play early. To get familiar with one another, develop a rhythm. And I'll tell you, that, that really is things, takes a toll, especially on young players. We talk about practice. Jim Laranega told us last night when we had a Zoom call with him, most days, because of all the injuries, they only have six or seven players available for practice. Even some of the guys healthy enough to play are limited in practice. What a beautiful steal there by Walker. He'll lay it in, and the Hurricanes have taken the lead. Can you believe this? Can you believe what we're seeing here? I mean, they're playing so shorthanded, but the one thing we said on top of the show, there's be no quit. They represent their coach. They play hard. They play with feeling. They understand how to play wide open. you got to make that. Wow. R.J. Davis way off and down with the rebound for the Hurricanes is Beverly. And we mentioned they only lost by one to Clemson, lost by two to Virginia Tech. They are hanging in games, playing tough. Gak can't put it in, but we've got a foul to take us to the under eight media time. Jay Funderburg. I do. His versatility, play with his back to the basket, so good at finishing as well. North Carolina State to one of the top four teams in ACC. Five That's points. not bold. The seven threes, that got him to two and six on the season. But now they're, Dick, they're getting all they can handle at home against Vandy and NC State trying to win at Clemson. We talked about how wide open the ACC appears to be. You could have any one of six, seven, or eight teams, I think, really making a run during conference play this year. You see where the Notre Dame superstar, Mr. Ellis, how immediately he sang the praises of a big guy. Those big <laughs> guys all stick together, man. He yeah. liked Thunderbird. I'll tell you what, they keep an eye on NC State. Kevin Keats told me they're going to be good this year. Miami on an 8-0 run, leading 16-14. Carolina has missed its last seven shots in a row. Make it eight as Baycott's jump hook rattles in and out. Well, you know the one thing when you talk about North Carolina, they had eight total turnovers in this quarter day. They got eight already in this game. Runner off the glass, no good for Walker. 16-14, almost 13 minutes into the game, and another sloppy wow. possession, another Carolina turnover. I tell you, Roy can't be happy when he's watching. Their rhythm and timing doesn't seem to be there. Baycott with a rejection of Beverly and a foul at the other end. Well, look at what's coming up over the next few days on the ESPN family of networks. Holy Steph Curry the last couple of games. Huh? You'll see the Clippers and Warriors both tomorrow night and again Friday night as part of ESPN NBA doubleheaders. Then it's the NFL wildcard game between the Ravens and the Titans on Sunday afternoon. And, of course, the national championship game Monday night, Alabama and Ohio State. Well, you mentioned when you, <laughs> you mentioned Curry, 62. Are you kidding me? 62 <laughs> points. I mean, I don't care if you get that with nobody guarding an intramural game. 62 in the NBA. Greatest shooter I have ever, ever seen in my life in the NBA. Urban Walton back into the game for Carolina. Baseline fadeaway, not there for love. Greatest shooter you have seen in your life better than reggie miller better than larry bird better than ray allen better than all of them name them all i don't care who you name i take <laughs> i take mr curry are you kidding me he is unbelievable he is and i think reggie and those guys would agree as good as reggie was larry i'm talking strictly shooting the rock there's no one that i've ever seen when he shoots it I feel it's going in. And when I'm watching a lot of these guys shoot it, I feel it's Brick City. <laughs> yeah, we do not have 10 Steph Currys on the floor so far tonight here in this game. But the guy at the line right now is a good shooter. This is Kerwin Walton, the freshman from Hopkins, Minnesota, of the six-man freshman class for Carolina. Five of them came in as consensus top 100 players. Three of them as top 20 players. Walton is the other guy, but you know what? He can shoot. And Roy Williams said to him, if your defense gets better, you're, I'm going to find minutes for you. And he's worked really hard at both ends of the floor, and he's a 50% shooter from three. And right now, Dick Carolina needs all the shooters they can find. 
Well, he's going to get a lot of PT, a lot of playing time, because also Roy said he's a terrific worker. He's got great work habits. He wants to be a player. And when you can stroke the basketball, you got a chance. Second year in a row that Miami has played Carolina without Chris Likes, without Cameron McGusty, both out with injuries as Matt Cross, the 6'7 freshman, knocks down a three. Our friend Paul Biancardi telling me, reminding us that he played at Brewster Academy. Dick played at the same school as Donovan Mitchell and Buddy Beheim both played at. And he's a young guy with a really good feel for the game. Yeah, he's got great passing ability as well as ability to shoot the ball. Sharp working hard. And eventually the call goes against Carolina on the battle underneath the bucket. I'm going to tell you one thing. As you watch right now, Cross shooting the big three. I mean, he shot that down from prime. 112, baby. My buddy owns that beautiful restaurant down here in Miami. I got to take you there one day, man. All the celebrities are there, Dan. I go down there. <laughs> I'm and in. I'm really. Oh, yeah, you went right. You did. Yeah, we went down there. That foul went on sharp. Carolina has missed its last 11 shots, and Miami ups the lead to five on a nice drive by Olani, who really gives them a guy who can get to the basket from the wing from the baseline. You know, Olani gets to the basket, but nobody rotated over. Nobody came out to really stop his drive, take his angle away, coming out of that baseline. Now watch this right here. He goes right to the goal. Where's the help? Come on now. Got to challenge him better than that. They did rotate over. I got to give them credit there. They're out of sync offensively. You look at North Carolina, they're out of sync offensively. And they got a heck of a coaching staff, too. Meanwhile, at the other end, and again, we remind you, we are not physically at the arena, so sometimes he gets a... Uh, uh, a little bit more difficult. Difficulties again with the broadcasting from afar as Dick and I are in our respective homes. It looks like the basket is good. And then Sharp is at the line because it was the 17th foul committed by Miami. So it's one and a bonus for Sharp. So Dick, this has a chance to be a five-point trip for Carolina. Yeah, really a big turnaround right there. Five points. 
I tell you, Walton making that three is big news for them. Carolina's got three threes tonight in seven attempts, so they're doing that well. They're just not hanging on to the basketball. They've turned it over three times already. You know, Dan, something else they're not doing, typical Carolina fashion, run the transition game. Yeah. Get the ball out and transition. Get easy layups. You don't see that. And they, they should with guys like Davis and Caleb Love with their quickness. Love in the game right now, along with Playtech in the backcourt. Leaky Black pushing it ahead to Love. They'll try to score in transition here. Follow no good, and the third opportunity no good as well. And then a foul committed by Playtech. Boy, oh boy, did they have chances there. Well, they were up on a glass, that's for sure. But that's typical. You know, you think about Roy Williams, Tom Izzo, uh, Jimmy Laranega was telling us, year in and year out, those guys, their kids get up on a glass, and they rebound. So nothing to be different right there. Well, Carolina is third in the nation in offensive rebounding percentage, the percentage of their misses that they get on the offensive glass. But even though they've been getting some offensive rebounds, they can't put them back in tonight. How about missing 13 of their last 14 shots? Yep. And that's why a Hall of Fame coach has that kind of a look on his face right now. Mask and all, you can see what, how Roy Williams is feeling right now, can't you, Dickie V? Absolutely, no doubt about it. He was that way today when we talked to him. He was very open about it, how he's frustrated by their what they're doing, turning the ball over, not defending like he wants, and not making shots. He kept emphasizing, you got to make shots. Make shots, that's what the game is about. They're shooting only 26% tonight. And that number will go down a little bit after that miss, and we've got another foul going against Carolina. And Deng Yak, who plays with a chronically bad knee that has been a major issue for him the last couple of years, does not practice very much. Here going up for the rebound. He got fouled from behind and watch as he comes down and that right ankle looked like he rolled his right ankle, Dick. Hmm. Tell you one thing, that's what they don't need, another injury. Yeah. They don't have enough guys as it is. I feel for Jimmy Larin because he was so excited about this year and about the potential of getting all his starters back from last year, bringing in that young star, Timberlake, a future star, Cross. I thought this was going to be one of those special, special years. Well, they should get McGusty back. I mean, they had him back Saturday, but he's out tonight with a hamstring injury as Playtech lays in a reverse. The real key is when do they get Chris Likes back? Just a, a obviously a very badly sprained ankle. He's been out about a month already and isn't even back on the court practicing yet. I'll tell you one thing, Dan, he's a team changer. He's a guy that really gives you such a lift offensively, defensively, creates havoc on the floor. I mean, he's a monster with the ball in his hands. He may be small in stature, but he's a giant with the rocks in his hands. Timberlake, who's a lefty, scoops it up and in, and the Miami lead is now three. That's a no-no. You can't allow a guy to get to the basket. <laughs> the pack line, and they can't shoot it, and they can't pass it. Dan? Gavin? Bonds, coach, thank you. Yeah, Dick, you would think that Carolina would be winning the battle of points of the paint tonight. They are not. Miami, uh, as the guy said, they are getting into the paint. They've got 14 points in the paint. Carolina's only got eight. And we started at the top of the show saying Carolina's going to try to pound the ball inside as much as they can. They haven't been able to do it a whole lot tonight. Well, you know, Seth just hit it on the nail. If you're not making shots, you can't create space for the big guys. And they don't have people to really know how to enter the ball to the post. We don't see many guys today with the special arm. I'll tell you what. Talk about a post guy. Mr. Ellis, baby, the former daughter named Super, was dominant in the post. Cross open to the corner, misses the three, and Love with the rebound for the Tar Heels. Hey, LaFonso, did I say it the way you wrote it out for me? I think I did. <laughs> Love into the oh, paint, shoot. nice kick. Leaky Black, his second three of the game. Nice little penetration right there, got in the lane, found the open guy, and Leaky Black, normally not a great shooter, he's more of a slasher, but he's knocked down two threes here. Made that big shot against the Fighting Irish to win that game. Yeah, he sure did. Banked one in with nine seconds left to give Carolina a one-point win over Notre Dame. Here comes the highly rated love. 
One of the big time recruits come out of high school, penetrates, kicks it out, and Mr. Black knocks it down. Hey, you know, we're talking about in the conference. You and I were talking off the air. You know, Syracuse, you said, keep an eye on them. I say, keep an eye on Louisville. I think that Louisville has the best backcourt in the ACC. Harley Jones, and also, when you look at David Johnson, and when they get Charles Midland, I had him against Gonzaga. And I'm going to tell you, when he played for San Fran, he could play. His dad was a heck of a player at St. John's. But you put Midland into that combination, and if they could ever get back, the big guy, Malik Williams, as well, by the end of January, they, to me, are a team that's going to be tough to beat in the ACC. Yeah, Chris I Mack agree with you. Great job. Yeah, I think Syracuse is going to make some noise. And, and, you know, we talked about teams like Virginia Tech and Clemson and, uh, you know, Florida State's going to be a factor. Some teams just haven't played very much. Duke has hardly played. Syracuse has hardly played. We need to see more of these teams. Absolutely. And I'll tell you the one thing. You're going to have a lot of nights where you're going to go, can't believe that score. Can't believe what's happening. I mean, there's no real continuity or consistency. Get ready. Our most popular battery is now even more powerful. Annual Home Depot College Football Awards Show, a 90-minute virtual special this year. Reese Davis hosts, along with Holly Rose, 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN and on the ESPN app. Congratulations to Alabama's Devontae Smith winning the Heisman Trophy earlier tonight. The first wide receiver, Dick, to win it since Desmond Howard did so back in 1991. And he's the first guy to win it that's not a quarterback since 2015 when another fellow guy from down of Tuscaloosa by the name of Derrick Henry, a tremendous running back, he's right now in a pro superstar. He won it, and now you got Devontae winning it. And I'm happy in a way because I don't want you to see always the quarterbacks, the quarterbacks. They get everything. They get the beautiful girls on campus. They get it all. They get everything. Are you kidding me? They always say if you're a great quarterback, you live like a king. You know what? I like to see the guys that work in the trenches, the guys that are out there catching passes and make them look so good. Is that going to count? It is. The bucket will count for Anthony Walker, but a chance for three. Now, look at that defense. Just watch that. Total matador defense. I know Seth right now, LaFosse will say, what is that? What kind of defense is this? Comes a little fake right to the goal. Does anybody come on over? Come on now. I could drive in and make that shot. Boy, with their size, too, you think they would have great rim protection and other teams wouldn't be driving as easily into the paint as the Hurricanes have tonight. And Roy Williams has actually gone smaller right now. Only one of his true bigs in the game right now. Almost always he's got two of them in there. Walton doing what Walton does. Knocks down a three and Carolina back on top. Well, they did a nice job reversing the ball. You know, Sands were a little critical here, obviously, North Carolina. Why? Because we've come accustomed to expect greatness out of that uniform. We've come accustomed to understand they're supposed to be special. I mean, top recruiting classes, top players, you expect more and more and more. Is it fair? I think, you know, that's part of the part of the formula. You've got to take that kind of hit when you're up there on top and people are talking about how great you are. And the question is, as young as they are, will they get a lot better for the next few weeks? Almost as many turnovers as made field goals in this game tonight. And there's another turnover as Armando Baycott has called for the offensive foul. Hey, Baycott's been real quiet in this game. And he's been strong for them down inside. Oh, there's the charge. No doubt about that. I mean, come on. I can see that with my one eye from right here in Lakewood Ranch, Florida. Are you kidding me? Hey, where's my neighbor? I need a little... Uh, my man, Mr. Jagger, I haven't been able to get a hold of him. Help me out, Dan. Does Mick Jagger know you're his neighbor? <laughs> he doesn't know who the hell I know I am. you know he's your neighbor, but <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know who I am. <laughs> well, Lonnie misses a three from the corner, and it stays with Miami, so they'll put 20 back on the shot clock. Really, a seven man rotation right now for Jim Laranaga. And again, they hope to get McGusty back soon and likes at some point. But this has been like the Virginia Tech game, like the Clemson game. They battle and they stay in it. Now, one thing, talk about a battler. Jimmy was years ago, way before you. I watched him down at Providence when he played. Joe Mullaney, he was a great coach. Jimmy was a competitor, and that's what his kids are doing. They're competing. 
Tough turnaround by Beverly not there. Down with a rebound. Leaky Black at Carolina. And did we get a timeout call? I believe. Yeah, I believe Roy Williams called timeout. So with 4.2 seconds to go, he'll try to set something up for a final look here in the first half. Well, the good news for Carolina is they're shooting the three well tonight. They're five of ten from three-point range. But the bad news, my friend, is they have turned it over 11 times. You know, they beat some good teams. Well, they beat Stanford, and they beat Kentucky before Kentucky's on this roll. That was a negative roll. They lost a tough game at the buzzer in Texas. You saw Texas along with Jay where they were unbelievable against Kansas. They lost by one. And it was Coleman made the winning shot. Did he not, yep. Dan? Yes, he did. And then lost a tough game to Iowa, lost to North Carolina State. Georgia Tech zoned them. I mean, Josh Pastor's done a heck of a job after losing early to Mercer, Georgia State. They've won six of their last seven games. And he's got a really terrific recruiting class coming in next year at uh, Georgia Tech as well. Yeah, but now the Yellow Jackets have gone into a COVID pause as well, we, we found out today. Oh, so they'll they? be shut down for a while. They did, yep. Oh, wow. Davis gets it off but can't hit it. And the Tar Heels, despite all of the turnovers, will take a two-point lead into halftime over the Hurricanes, 32-20 at the break between Miami and North Carolina. Time for the Jeep Halftime Report. Big concern, turning the ball over and making shots. And tonight, they have made some threes, and that's been a rarity for them, so that's a plus. A couple of key guys really were not able to do much of anything in the first half. Isaiah Wong averaging 18 a game, picked up a couple of fouls in the first half, played 11 minutes, did not score. Garrison Brooks off the bench, eight minutes, took two shots, made one free throw. That's it, over two from the floor. And again, when you've had it. Let's see how things go here in the second half. Carolina six and four on the season, one and two in the league. Miami four and four, still looking for its first win in league play. The Hurricanes are 0 and three as Walton comes out with an air ball to start the second half. Tell you one thing, they got to get some touches inside the Brooks. They got to get him feeling good about himself. I got to believe down deep, he's battling himself a little bit mentally in terms of confidence after being a preseason player of the year selection. And he's really been struggling coming off the bench. Uh, he's letting go right to the basket. I mean, that's a simple move down the gut of the defense. They give up too many layups. They really do, Dan. They give up too yep. many easy shots. And this year, Brooks now a perfect four for four. The Cincinnati transfer, and now another Carolina turnover. Wow. And Miami's wow. going to take the lead on the dunk by Beverly. Are you serious right there? One turnover after another, man. And, and we're not talking Apple turnovers, because I love Apple turnovers. But that's a basketball turnover. I mean, come on. Yeah, you know, I've been hearing that. that line for 25 years, and I can't believe it, but I still laugh every time that you say that. <laughs> <laughs> what you say uh, by the way, you mentioned, yeah, you mentioned Garrison Brooks. He didn't start the game, remember, but he does start the second half. De'Ron Sharp is not on the floor to start the second half. As Walton comes back from the recent air ball that makes a three, he sure does appear to be Carolina's best outside shooter. He's now 15 for 29 from three-point range, and almost all of that has come in the last five games. And now he comes up with a steal. And you know what, Dick? He's going to keep getting more and more playing time. Yeah, if he plays defense like that, it's on the floor. You know what I love about him? He throws an air ball up, and then he comes right back and shoots it again. He said, really, I'm going to show you. I'm not a fluke as a shooter. I'm legit. Look at that hustle. He's going to go to the goal, man. He's making like that football team and how great they were when they played Miami. Oh, my God. They put the hurt on the Kings. Well, the guy who wears number 24 to honor Kobe Bryant. He has 13 points tonight. Nobody else on either team is in double figures, but now somebody is. That dunk by Brooks, and he's got 10. Look at the easy layup he got again. Easy yep. layups. I mean, I can't believe that. Points in the paint, Dick. 22 to 10 in favor of Miami. The opposite that you would expect in this game. They don't stop the ball. They allow too much penetration. Look at this right here. Nobody there. I mean, it's a simple dunk play. I mean, we're looking at a team right here playing without three starters, basically. 
when you think factor in if they had Miller and had the guy Wartenberg and had likes, I mean, McCusty, you throw in a fourth, too. I yep. mean, come on. How good would they be? That's the big yeah. question. Well, Jimmy they'll Barrett get one, probably two of them back. They'll get McGusty back. Hopefully, they get likes back before too long. And that's a legitimate backcourt. That's an ACC backcourt. Yeah. Off the back of the iron for Beverly, and back come the Tar Heels with a one-point lead early in the second half. Knocked away by Cross, and another Carolina turnover. Had no angle to make that pass, Dan. Had no angle whatsoever. Long double teamed in the corner. Somebody's got to be open. Carolina recovers. And a foul as they try to go inside to Brooks again. And it looks like it'll be Baycott called for the foul. Baycott comes into the game. You know, he's just a blue collar guy, nothing fancy, but he comes into the game leading Carolina in scoring, rebounding, and field goal percentage, but he's hardly been able to get on track, and that's his third foul, Dick. He's going back to the bench. Yeah, we really haven't called his name a whole lot. He played at IMG Academy, which is about 20 minutes from where I am, and I'll tell you this, he was really a solid player there. He's had some good moments last year, but North Carolina, obviously, last year wasn't typical North Carolina. They were 14 and 19. They missed certainly Cole Anthony when he got hurt. Had a tremendous debut in his first game against Notre Dame. By the way, he's doing fairly well now with the Orlando Magic. The runner in the paint, and it's going to drop. Harlan Beverly, the sophomore from Detroit, and he'll head to the line as well. You know, Dan, I'm amazed at how many easy shots they're getting. I don't see anybody stopping the ball. I mean, splitting the defense right there, right down the lane, a little floater in the lane. He's very good friends, by the way, they say, with the young rebound and tenacious guy that played at Memphis, now playing with the Miami Heat, uh, Precious uh, Achua. A precious Achua, there it is right there. Oh, yeah, One yeah. Time on that. target, Dickie V. Wow, wow. I didn't know they were going to post that. What a job Miami <laughs> Heat have done. Pat Riley's done a great job with that unbelievable franchise. Sharp. Misses the jump hook. Rebound by Brooks. Did a great job not allowing him to get to where he could use the backboard in that sequence. Beverly with a pull-up in the Miami. Lead is four. Too many easy shots. I mean, too many easy. A little 12-foot jump shot. Carolina coughs it up again. How many turnovers? I don't have the stats in front of me. How many do they have? I think that's 15 turnovers now for Carolina in 24 minutes of basketball. Wow. They only had eight total in the game against Notre Dame. Timberlake misses shot. the three. Not a good shot. You need some patience there. How about Leaky Black, by the way, came into the game having made three threes on the season in 15 attempts, and he's three for three tonight. Wow. Three for 15, that's one five. You come and denominate, that's 20%. 20% doesn't make it in a game of basketball. Oh, nice nice backcourt. backcourt cut and feed, but a good recovery by Black. Now, Leaky Black, Leaky Brooks, Black getting from? it done at both ends for the Tar Heels, and they need it right now. Wow. If you printed out directions to get here today, you're in the right place. My seminars are a great tool to help young homeowners who are turning into their parents. Now remember, great, and they have asked us at ESPN to pick our winner for the game. And, and oh. they provided us each with a pennant, and it's going to be Alabama. Bama, he's got, oh, what a shock, Bama. You better watch which, out for Trey which way you going? and Mr. Fields. I got to go, bam. I got to go, Mr. Yes, yeah, <laughs> Saban again. He's the best coach of all time in college football. And I love Devontae. I love Mr. Smith, man. Matt Jones, the Smith. And what about Harris running the ball? But I'll tell you what, Ohio State will not be Cupcake City. Nope. I love their running back, Sermon. And we'll go to status of Fields. What a game he had against Clemson. Huh? What a performance that oh, was. Oh, wow. What about the running back? He's picked up yep. 520 yards in his last two games. 520. A touch for Brooks in the paint. Left it short. Sharp tries to run it down. But a cross has it for the Hurricanes. Five minutes into the second half. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, Carolina, Miami, and the undermanned Hurricanes with a one-point lead. Too much dribbling. Too much dribbling. Pass the ball. Move the 
the ball. He Moves hasn't scored ball. yet. Wong still looking wow. for his first points of the night. Yeah, but you're not going to do anything. You can just play with the wall and pound it to the deck. It's a ball movement and player movement. Cross with a nice pass. pass. Gak can't finish it. Timberlake will as Miami takes advantage of another bucket in the paint. That must have been a nice combination in high school. Timberlake and Dickinson of Michigan together. Look at him working on the glass right there. And they say he's not 100%. I mean, Alex, who does a great job, is their SID. And also, you talk about SIDs. I mean, think about Mr. Kirshner and the job he does. We said it all the time, you and I. I mean, it's invaluable what these SIDs do for schools. And they're yeah. underpaid. Give them some cash. They deserve it. And especially from afar this year, making sure that we get all the information, setting up Zoom calls with coaches, that sort of thing. Three-point play for Timberlake and a four-point lead for Miami. They really feel he's going to become special. Davis turns it over. Wow. Got caught in the air. Timberlake, and the layup is good for Olaji to extend the lead to six. Might need a T.O. here. I mean, it's yeah. really... Struggle City the way they're handling the ball. They have no real good spacing. A foul inside. Timberlake fouls Brooks to keep him from the easy layup. How about this behind the back pass in transition, Dick? That's routine. I made that play back in 1958 when I played in high yeah. school. Come on yeah. now, run, run around the back. <laughs> they do that routine. That's routine. I, I'm not shocked by that. Love doing a game with you, my man. I love being here, even though we're at home, to see basketball, that's a real plus. And I know we got a lot of chaos going on with COVID-19, pausing programs. And you know, when you pause, pause a team, like Villanova's been out for quite a while, I own them. Rick Pitino's had two situations where they're paused. You miss some practice for like yeah. many days. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, then you got situations like the North Carolina game against Notre Dame a couple of ga uh, days ago. Each each of them was supposed to play a different team, but those schools had to shut down because of COVID. So 48 hours before the fact, uh, Mike Bray and Roy Williams got on the phone and, and set up a game just so each of them could have a game to play. And I think a first for them, if you watch some of the offensive class, Mike Bray, first for him lifetime as a coach, he wore shorts to the game. Coach did shorts. In January. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't believe the one weather down there at Chapel Hill. Sharp has it taken away from behind by Timberlake, who's really making some plays tonight. Did good anticipation right there. Cross for three. Got it. Wow. I'm going to tell you, Dan, he's going to be a very good player. You got Cross and Timberlake. That's a nice little combination of new type of dandies for them down in Miami. Boy, how out of sync does Carolina look at the offensive end? Yeah, they don't have rhythm. No rhythm at yeah. all. I mean, Leaky Black is the only guy getting things done right now for them. That's his first two-pointer of the game. He's got three threes and now 11 points on the night to go with six rebounds. You know, Leaky's a veteran player. He's played a lot of competition, played against a lot of good players throughout his career. Another drive, just too easy. Those are the first points of the night for Isaiah Wong. Two more points in the paint for the Hurricanes. Very easy. I mean, just simple drive to the goal. Straight line drive right for a layup. Long jumper not there for Sharp. Points in the paint are now 30 to 12 in favor of Miami. I'll tell you one thing, what Jimmy Laranega told us, he said he started when he was an assistant coach at Virginia with Terry Holland. He said, we have seven ways that we play against North Carolina, and I've taken those seven throughout my career, and nothing's going to change. We're going to try to do those same seven things. And started off with one is keep them off the offensive class, two in transition, and they've done that. And the bottom line is his team is executing his game plan. He told us flat out, Dan, he said, if we execute my game plan, we got a chance to win. Yep. They trailed early in the game, trailed by as many as eight points, I believe. No, six points early in the game. But now they've got an eight-point lead with 12-22 to go in the second half. And Carolina, as we mentioned, just totally out of sync, it looks like, here in the second half, really at both ends of the court. I'm going to tell you, Dan, if they lose this game, to me, it's a big surprise. I really came here, to be honest with you, I thought Carolina would be too, too strong with their interior game. 
against Miami, who has got so many injuries. I really did. I thought that when you think about guys like Brooks coming off the bench, Caleb Love coming off the bench, but now I can understand what Roy was telling us. You could feel it in his voice today that he was really, really frustrated over the way they've been playing, that they have not improved like he expected. And Dick Garrison Brooks just fouled Harlan Beverly on a three-point attempt. Wow. And no, my mistake. Had a foot on the line, so it was a long two. So a couple of free throws. They both go for Beverly to extend the lead to ten. You know, Beverly played at a great high school down there. Montverde would have so many tremendous players, including D'Angelo Russell, Ben Simmons. I mean, the list goes on and on. Eight-point lead here. We got another game coming tonight. Kansas and TCU will Tammy leading Carolina in the first game tonight. Still coming up at 10 o'clock Eastern Time, 9 Central. It'll be Kansas and TCU. And you can see that game right here on ESPN. And that means you will hear and see and learn from Fran Fraschilla as he talks to us about the Jayhawks and the Horn Frogs. Looking forward to the game, Fran. Yeah, I'm going to stay awake late tonight, Dan, but it's, it's going to be fun. Yeah, and we're going to see a Kansas team that you saw Saturday get annihilated by Texas. But let me remind folks that last year on January 11th, they lost to Baylor at home. They wound up winning their next 16 in a row. Yeah. But I don't think what do you think practice was like though, the, the last Brad. couple of days in Lawrence? You know, we talked to Bill yesterday, and he was, uh, and I, we talked to the players. They were forceful. Uh, Bill was forceful, but he felt like there was no reason to beat him down. Dick knows this time of year, you know, you got to get these guys ready to play the next game. Uh, it's going to be a challenge tonight. TCU has got a very good young team. Remember this name, Mike Miles. He is a freshman at TCU, and he reminds me, Dick Vital, of Frank Mason Jr. Whoa, wow, that's quite a bit. Hey, they also got a nice combination, though. Nemhart leads the league in scoring, and they got Samuel yes. inside, a double-double guy. And, Fran, I'm hearing rumors that Marcus Garrett may not play. Is that true? Well, he's warming up. We saw him warm up, Dick, and also he's got uh, 12 family members coming to the game tonight, so I have a feeling he's going to play. But we have watched him warm up in the last few minutes. He should be ready to go. Fran, who are you with tonight? With Shusen? Is that who you got? No, we gave him the night off. He's, uh, you know, he's getting ready for the, the Jets draft there, Dan. Uh, but we got Mark Neely, my old reliable friend in the All Big right. 12. And uh, we should have a fun game. You know, TCU's only, only beaten Kansas twice since they've come into the Big 12. You guys will remember about eight years ago, Kansas came into uh, Schollmeyer Arena and not, got knocked off. And that was the night Bill Self said they could not beat the Topeka YMCA. This is a little bit better TCU team tonight. It'll be a nice challenge to see how Kansas bounces back. Hey, Dick, one thing that has to happen, David McCormick has to get going. This guy is shooting 33% from the field, and combined with the fact that this is Bill Self's worst two-point shooting team in the entire uh, Bill Self era. So they got to get some points in the paint. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, you got to get some point production down there, create space for all the guys on the perimeter. I'll tell you one thing, though, the guy, Jalen Wilson's been very good for them. He really has, Dick. This is a kid that's coming home to Dallas tonight. And uh, I'll tell you, he's not as good. And, Dan, you saw him over the weekend. He's not as good a player as Jason Tatum, but he's got that kind of fluidity. Six foot eight, about 215 pounds. A kid that got himself into great shape. And right now, although Bill Self told us yesterday, Ochai Abaji is their best player there's no question Jalen Wilson has an it factor that you guys saw when they beat Kentucky and he had 21 points in the second half of that win Looking hey Fran I think all of us who touched the St. We'll watch. go ahead Dick well, I just want to simply say, you coach the St. John's, we got to send a nice happy birthday to Luigi Carnesecca, 96 today. <laughs> Luigi Carnesecca, I love him. Happy birthday, Luigi. You think he went over to Dante's tonight? Probably not because it's closed, but you know he had a nice Italian meal, Dick. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. <laughs> Is there any hey, wait, tonight? Mark Neely, Fran Fraschilla, Kansas, Italian? and TCU. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Dick.
Thanks, Thank Coach. Thank you, buddy. Should be a, a real good one between Kansas as they try to bounce back from that 25-point loss to Texas as they take on TCU tonight. Meanwhile, a couple of buckets for Carolina to get them back within three, just past the midway point of the second half in Miami. Wow! Oh, wow. And what a finish by Anthony Walker! You know, right down the lane, Dan. Right down the lane. The lane is wide open like a Mack truck, and he goes down there flying. He makes like a little mini version of a guy that used to wear number 23 for North Carolina. <laughs> and I say mini. And now Garrison Brooks called for the offensive foul. Look at the body language of Garrison. You can just see the body language. Now oh, he's just really right now fighting himself. Look at that duck right down the lane. Up, up and away. He's like a Skywalker. There he goes. And my buddy Miles down here, Prime 112, is jumping with joy. Saying, man, I love it. Boy, wow. Miles, I'll tell you, I can't miss going down here. He sent me a text halftime. Great food, service. I get my autograph book out too, getting all kinds of autographs. <laughs> I'm like a groupie, Dan. I'm like a groupie. Walker with the slam of the night and the foul on Brooks Dick, his fourth. He has gone to the bench, and you talked about the body language. He is having a, another tough night, one for five, four points. And Garrison Brooks back to the bench now for Carolina. And as you see in the bottom, preseason, ACC player of the year based on his productivity last year. But Roy said, like last year, Roy made a great point. You know, we went to him a lot because we didn't have a whole lot. We struggled last year. I, I want to see this kid get going. You hate to see kids struggle a little bit, especially with that good people. And everybody raves about him as a young guy. Boy, and the strength yeah, of the Carolina team has been the big guys. The guard play really hasn't been in... Uh, what they had hoped for, although Kerwin Walton has really come on in recent games shooting the ball, but tonight the big guys, Dick, Brooks, four points, four fouls, Sharp, seven points, 11 rebounds, but just two for eight from the field, and Baycott, a quiet night, just five points and two rebounds. You know, sometimes, and I expected greatness this year, to be honest with you, because you read those reports and you hear those reports, people analyze and evaluate these kids. You figure it out when they're writing about a guy like Caleb Love and you say it with that front court. I mean, it's going to be a monster. They got Baycott back, they got certainly Brooks back, they had Sharp, and now they bring in a kid like Love, who's supposed to be a terrific point guard. I'm going to tell you, you just don't see it. It takes time and patience. I think a lot of times these kids lose a little confidence. Love thought about the three, dishes it off to Davis. He's quick. Yeah, Miami packing it in, all kinds of deflections, and they come up, at least for the moment, with what looked like a turnover, and a timeout is called by Sharp. So Carolina winds up hanging on to the ball. They use a timeout to do so, and we'll step aside with 8.16 to go, and Miami up by seven. Oh, yeah, I'm going to take off. Now, you downloaded the TD Ameritrade mobile app? Yeah, actually, I'm taking one last look at my dashboard before we board. And you have Thinkorswim mobile? So I can finish. We stayed here, Miami, leading North Carolina by seven. With 7.38 to go. And Wong knocks down a jumper, his second field goal of the game. Both of them have come here in the second half, and the lead is up to nine. You know, if he gets stuck starts going he's their leading scorer set out most of the first half in foul trouble that'll be a big plus for them this will be the longest seven minutes for jim laranaga be looking at that clock man can't wait to see it go walton misses a three he has shot the ball well tonight he's made three threes leaky black has made three threes the two of them have been the bulk of the offense for the tar heels tonight and we've got a held ball possession arrow will give it to the tar heels yeah good Defensive play right there. Hey, you know, talk about the Tar Heels having a tough time shooting the ball. They should go to their bench. Hubert Davis, man, he could stroke it. Kendall Marshall, he could pass it. And we got Mr. May in the post. You take those three guys off the coaching staff and put them in those Tar Heel uniforms, those guys can play. I mean, Hubert was some kind of shooter, man. Yeah, and I'll he tell was. you, May, May was a great player on the interior. And Kendall Marshall, he was Mr. Assist the way he passed the ball. They're all on that staff along with Brad Frederick. I'm going to tell you something, Steve Robinson, they got a great coaching staff. Trying to figure out this young team, six freshmen in a 10-man rotation. And Carolina six and four on the season and down by nine as they turn it over 
yet again. That is 17 turnovers committed by the Tar Heels tonight. Oof. 12 steals. That's a season high right now in terms of Miami. 12 steals here in this game. Playing hard. He said they would play hard. Wow, Walker, wow, who shot had the right huge here. slam earlier, gets into the paint again. Wanted the call, but he doesn't get it. Tune into the ACC Network for more college basketball action from these two teams on January the 16th. You can see the Hurricanes hosting Louisville. And then on the 20th, it'll be Wake Forest traveling to the Dean Dome to take on the Tar Heels. You know, Steve Spore, I think he's going to do one heck of a job at Wake Forest. I really do. But people are going to have to be patient. Losing Olivier Czar was certainly big. Who, by the way, Czar in the last two games has really shown life for Kentucky. I think at like 25 today, they won a three-point shot by Mintz at the end of the game to beat a Tar Heel, a former Tar Heel great, Jerry Stackhouse and Vanderbilt. I have Kentucky this Saturday against Florida. Yeah, 77 74 win over Vanderbilt. Olivier Saar with 24 points to lead the way for Kentucky tonight. So the funny thing is, they're only 3 and 6 on the season. They're 2 and 0 oh in league play. Now they've both been very narrow victories over Mississippi State and now Vanderbilt, but they are 2 and 0 oh in the SEC. Yeah, absolutely. I'll tell you, the SEC, keep an eye where a guy's doing a great job and nobody talks about it. Alabama, they don't. So are you kidding me? Beat Tennessee. At Tennessee, and then today they put the herd on Florida, the Gators. Yeah, they're up 20 in the final minute against the Gators right now. Garrison Brooks is back in the game, playing with four fouls right now for the Tar Heels. Love can't finish. And then oh. Brooks misses the slam. How tough of a Boy, it has been what? that kind of a night, hasn't it? Oh, that's a tough night when he misses that kind of shot on the inside. If he made that shot, I was going to simply say, it's danger time for Miami. Watch this now. Ball goes inside, good pass, and he gets the back of the rim. Tell you who's been quiet. We expected big things. Dayron Sharp. He had that monster game, the game earlier against North, Notre Dame, but he had 25 and dominated. And you give Miami credit. You know, we keep saying this guy's struggling, this guy's turning the ball over. A lot of that is also because the Miami kids have been battling, have been very tenacious defensively, communicating, talking to one another, helping each other. Yeah, Sharp's having a big night rebounding. He's got 14 boards, which is two of eight from the floor, seven points on the night. Here he goes with a runner. And that basket's going to count. The call is a block underneath. So the basket will count for Sharp and heading to the line as well. I'll tell you one thing, that's a real big play he made right there. I'm going to tell you right now, it is danger time for Miami. They were up nine, were they not? They were and got a chance to get it down to five as the foul goes against Miami it was Brooks trying to step in and take the charge got it down to five now got a chance to get it down to four after sharp heads to the free throw line what a future this kid has unbelievable six foot eleven that fouls Nasir Brooks out of the game dick the and you know, that's the one really you know, the, a, a big body who can hang with a guy like Sharp. So now it's going to be some big minutes down the stretch for Dane Gak, who is coming off the bench for the Hurricanes. Yeah, that's a big loss because they don't have a whole lot of physical presence, physicality inside to battle the North Carolina kids. Well, they're right there now, North Carolina. Good comeback. Now Miami hang on. They weren't able to hang on. They weren't able to hang on against. Clemson and against Virginia Tech. They lost two heartbreakers last possession both games. Oh, that's a tough pass. That's a tough pass. I think we got a foul call going against Playtech. Ooh, but you're right. This is going to be a long five and a half minutes right now for Miami to keep their composure, execute at the offensive end, get good shots. Yeah, that was a tough pass to make right here. You got to Got to have a guy step into the ball. He had no chance to step to the ball on that pass. He got bumped. He got a lucky call right there. 
Could have been a turnover. Roy wanted a turnover right there. Yeah, Roy Williams not a fan of that call. Ninth team foul. Well, think about it. Carolina. You know, Dan, think about it. A call there, a turnover. You got a four point game with the ball. Instead, of this guy's on a free throw line right now. Timberlake, chance to put it up to six. And gets the bounce on the front end. Little plays like that turn games around. Just little simple situations. And you got to take advantage of an opportunity that they gave you. You got to convert. A dozen now for Timberlake to go with five rebounds and five assists on the night. The lead is back to six. He's going to be a good player. Spacing. See, they're going have good spacing right there. Yeah. It's easy to give help when you're all tied up with each other. You're going to be 15 to 17 feet apart. Make it difficult for a defense to give help. You know, the other thing right now is Caleb Love is just not looking for his shot at all. You can see that his confidence isn't great. He's 0 for 6 tonight. He has not shot the ball well at all this year. Sharp converts to make it a four-point game. But it's no, like said, Miami can feel it too that Love just doesn't want to shoot the ball right now. But I'll tell you one thing, the missed shot, Sharp has done a great. What's he got, 16 rebounds? Uh, we got him at 15 unofficially right now. Brosno and the rebound down to Black, and here come the Tar Heels. Well, Leaky Black's made some big plays for that. Playcheck up top for Sharp. Brooks has it knocked away by Gak, and it's Miami ball. Nice play right there. Gak coming up with a loose ball. Boy, giving away a lot of size on the interior, as we've said all game long. It'll be Miami basketball with 18 on the shot clock. They did a good job rotating defensively there because I thought they had himself a layup. Get down to this stretch of the game, four minutes. He gets down to execution. You want to be efficient. You want to make sure you get quality shots. Right people shoot the ball. All those little things are the difference of winning and losing. Picking up the dribbles and no, no. Shot clock at seven. Ball screen. Beverly for three, not there. And Love down with a rebound for Carolina. I wonder about Love, he'll push that ball up the court. Black with a baseline jumper, wow. way off. But it's tipped back out to Love. He'll shoot it. And left the three short, another offensive rebound. And an offensive foul on Leaky Black. Wow, they got a break there. They got a break there. Eye on that one. All right, Kevin, thank you very much. Carolina Miami here, a four point lead for the Hurricanes. 334 to go as we check out our assist of the game. Brought to you. Sear Brooks is fouled out of the game for Miami. Ross into the paint has to give it up. Ten seconds on the shot clock for the Canes. Beverly trying to make something happen. Timberlake lost the handle. The ball is loose and it belongs to Carolina. Nice pass. Playtech has it knocked away, but it stays with the Tar Heels. But they had himself a layup right there. A little two-man game. Nice little bounce pass. Hey, we just heard the news. Marcus Garrett is not playing. Right. That's incredible. That's a big loss. Grant said he's got 12 family members there. It looked like he was going to play, but we just got the word he is not playing. Urban Walton has just checked back into the game now for North Carolina. Give him that shooter. They want that shooter on the floor. And they get a huge bucket to make it a one-point game. Caleb Love with his first field goal of the night, and it's a huge shot to get him back within one. Yeah, it was really a pretty look, too. He had nice rotation, good follow through. They were down nine, North Carolina, at the seven minute mark. Two minutes ago, they're down one. Uncle Mo has arrived on the side of the kids where that Carolina Blue 
you know, give Caleb Love. Love a lot of credit. Remember, I'd said he wasn't really looking for a shot. Didn't look like he wanted to take a shot. He stepped into that three with confidence. Yeah, he really did. He squared his body well. Got good rotation. Big time high school player coming out of St. Louis. Two free throws here for Miami. After the foul on Love. And very short of the first one is Beverly. Yeah, free throw shooting so big when you get to the last two minutes of the game. Uh, wow. both very short, short on both. Yep, both. And Beverly coming into the game, Dick, just a 38% free throw shooter. They had made 11 straight up at that moment. They did 11 in a row. That tough shot. shot. Really tough shot. Yeah, that shot. Yeah. Had an open man in the corner, too. Ricky Black trying to go end to end, and a foul is called on Timberlake. That'll be his second. You almost get the feeling right now they're certainly playing like defensive rather than aggressively on the offensive side. I'm going to paint on the face of Timberlake. Can't believe it. They're, re they're retreating. They're not really attacking like they did earlier. And right now, Carolina's in the attacking mode. I'm telling you, Uncle Bo is on their side. Leaky Black to the line with a chance to give Carolina the lead. His first trip to the free throw line tonight. Free throw shoot, he's not been like a clinic right now. Both look. Miami misses two. He just misses the first one. Got a block out of that lane, too. Wow, a couple of misses for Black, who came into the game 73% from the line, and Miami still has the lead as we go into the final two minutes of regulation. It's been about five and a half minutes since they made a field goal. Carolina played a lot better defense in the last three, four minutes. Up on one another. Wow, just a wow. force from Timberlake up top. I think it was Walton who got a piece of it. So back-to-back -back possessions with tough shots taken by Miami. And Leaky Black makes another three. His fourth of the game. Yeah, well, he's made big shots. He made a big shot with nine seconds left to beat the Fighting Irish in their last game. And he stepped up big now. They're up two. But down nine, up two. But where did you know this what? come from, Dick? He's got more threes in this game than he had in the first ten games combined. Wide open right there, squared his body. He's in a rhythm right now. He's got good rhythm to his shot. Timeout on the floor. Let's throw it to Kevin Connors. And, Dan, we want to let you know Kansas TCU underway right now over on ESPN News. The Jayhawks trying to bounce back from that 25-point home loss to Texas Saturday. TCU 9-2 and to start the year. Kansas TCU after we go final in South Florida. Tell you one thing, Kevin, that's going to be a good game. It will be a very good game. This one has gotten very interesting. And North Carolina right now, I think it's a 13-2 run that the Tar Heels are on right now to take the lead. And really, the last two times down the floor, Dick, poor shot selection by Miami. Very low percentage right. looks. And that's what puts you in the loser's locker room. you got to take quality shots when the game is on the line, right here especially. And you can't miss free throws like they did. I mean, it, you don't want one of those heartbreaking losses again like they had their last two games. They had the possession of the ball against Virginia Tech and against Clemson with a chance to win and lost both those games. Miami has led by as many as 10. They are now trailing with less than a minute and a half to go. And it is out of bounds to the Tar Heels. Wow. You know, Dan, think about it. They were getting layup after layup, driving the ball, spreading the court, getting good spacing. And right now, they're really struggling to get a good shot. And this being in the last two minutes, they can have a look at this to see if it should be Carolina ball. Carolina's ball. Did he kick it out of bounds? It's well, Walker reaches and touches. I think both of them might have touched it, but I, I don't know how you would overturn that and give that to Miami. They both look like they got their hand in there. 
Did it hit Walker's foot after? Watch the foot of Walker. His left foot. Yeah, that's got to be Carolina ball. I thought it was Carolina ball. Is that how it looks down in Lakewood Ranch? It looks like Lakewood Ranch. It looks just like it's <laughs> Carolina ball, baby. Yeah, hit the left foot. It looked like that's Carolina ball. What about up in Toronto? So it looked like Carolina ball up in Toronto. Yeah, it looked like Carolina ball up in Toronto as well. Hey, what does Hudson say? Does Hudson say it goes to them? He's, long, he's, he's been sleeping a couple of hours already, man. Uh, really? <laughs> Miami 0 for its last eight and three turnovers since they had a 59 to 50 lead. That's how Carolina's gone on a 13 to 2 run. The call is confirmed. It does belong to Carolina. Look at some of the tough losses by four to Florida Gulf Coast, by two to Virginia Tech, by one just three days ago. Clemson you talk about a tough week if they lose this game Virginia Tech by two Clemson by one and now this game all in the span of a week incredible incredible but you don't want to keep saying they want to go out and get the win you got a minute 22 on the clock got a chance yet got to lock it up defensively and come up with a good shot North Carolina played a lot better though in the last five minutes they really have got better spacing spread the court a little bit more The three is short by Walton, and it's Miami ball. Into the final minute of regulation, Wong tries to finish, and it will draw the foul and head to the free throw line. Now, Wong's been real quiet in this game, averaging about 17 a game. Had the real tough first half, got in foul trouble. He's a good offensive player. He's just two player. for seven. Timberlake's played very well, but he's only three for 13 from the floor. Beverly's three for 13. I mean, let's be honest, Dick. You got one team shooting 34%, the other team shooting 33%. There, yeah, no, uh, there's been a little been bit of ugliness offensively at times in this game. Yeah, the efficiency hasn't been there. Yeah. He converts both free throws. He does. Final minute, Carolina ball, tie game. Each team with two timeouts remaining. Now the ball on a glass becomes big, boy. You got to really do a job, box it out. You know the amazing thing? When's the last time you can remember Carolina throwing the ball into the post to one of their big guys to try to get a bucket down? Not too often. You know, the post player's got to make themselves available, too. You got to move without the ball. You got to make yourself available. You got to get in that post position, be active, and want the ball. Right now, I don't think Garrison wants the ball. He has not been able to be very effective at all all night. Now they need him to be effective on a free throw line. This is one and one for Garrison Brooks. He went through a stretch last year. Roy was telling us today. Made 17 out of like 18 at one time on a free throw line. And then he went through a stretch, something like three for about 17. Did he not say that today at yep. our Zoom yep, meeting? Yeah, something to that effect. Yes. Yeah, 55% like from the line this season. And a couple of big makes for Garrison Brooks in Carolina. Well, he looked pretty good right there shooting those free throws. A lot of pressure here from oh, the heels wow, out of bounds, wow. and it's Tar Heel ball. And that's what he did against Clemson. They turned the ball over twice, late in the middle with a minute to go in that game, leading. They turned it over twice. Honor for Clemson did a big three, and then they came back, turned it over again, and Sims scored and won the game. Sims Roy Williams player. played a little offense defense uh, Walton's going to come back in now that it's Carolina ball as we have a timeout on the floor let's take a look now at tonight's Capital One rewarding performance stick and whoever would have thought Leaky Black would have knocked down four threes in this game I know you look at the statistic sheet that's why you got to sometimes throw those out the window you would have never thought that he'd be a guy as you said, Dan, only made three all year. He made four in this game. Wide open. Got good rotation. Good rhythm. Not only has made four, it. hasn't missed one. Four for four from three-point range tonight. And Cross dejected after he was unable to gather in the ball, and it bounced out of bounds back to North Carolina. Got to forget about it. You got to go out and play now. 44 precious seconds. You're only down two. You know that one at the bottom still kind of studying points in the Miami's got 10 more points in the paint than Carolina does Miami's done it mostly on drives into the paint from their perimeter players 
in Carolina we thought they would pound the ball inside try to dominate inside they haven't been able to do it right but let me tell you that points in the paint they're very deceiving though as you said Dan Miami's guards driving the ball over the goal have gotten himself little layups it's not like when we say points in the paint talking about guys posting up and dominating in the lane uh, here we go now they got to come up with a defensive stop obviously Black to inbound it for the heels. 20 on the shot clock. Carolina ball with a lead in the final minute. You got to match up and you got to be able to get yourself ready for a rebound on a missed shot. You know Carolina's going to use their bigs attacking that rim. Love who hit a big three a couple of minutes ago. Drives, has it knocked away, and it belongs to Miami. Shot clock turned off. And Jim Laranega will use a timeout with 20.5 seconds to go. North Carolina broke down in that possession. Broke down and tried to execute. Getting a good shot. Didn't have enough movement. Jimmy Laranega can come up with some magic right here. Did the ball bounce his way one time? It didn't bounce his way all week long at crucial times. We talked to him yesterday. He was in his car doing a Zoom with us. His wife was driving, and he was <laughs> directing her as he was going to the hospital to get a, uh, a shot. To get the, uh, his vaccination, yeah, to get yeah, his vaccination. vaccination. Yeah, COVID-19, yeah. Yeah, he was multitasking during the Zoom call, that's for yeah. sure. Last so time like out a, for Miami. And right now, he's got to design a shot for a guy that... Really, he believes it's got to be something with Juan. Juan's got to be the guy involved. When you look at them right now, their lineup offensively, who is the guy that's been a proven offensive player for them all year has been Juan. So Juan's got to be a guy that's going to figure it here. Ross can pass the ball, but he can shoot the three as well. We'll send you to Kansas and TCU as soon as this one is over. Here we go. Juan's got it. Gets it off and oh, hits it. Oh, a time to be won. A time won. Oh, what a shot. shot. What a shot, man. He floated the lane after they come up with a defensive stop. Watch the missed Carolina's shot. Carolina's got timeouts, but Roy Williams is going to let him play. Watch play the missed shot. Oh, it gets it to go. Ray Three seconds go. left for Miami. And Carolina will oh. win it on a basket by Andrew Playtech. Sending the Hurricanes to another heartbreaking defeat. Three in a row, Dan. Think about it. Three in a row. 70 to 68 to Virginia Tech. Lose by one to Clemson and get beat on a drive in the last possession here. Three of them. Took the fastball, the curveball, and the slider. All for three. And these what three a, heartbreaking losses. What a finish. What a tough shot by Isaiah Wong to tie it. And then Roy Williams decides to let him play. Black finds Playtech. And Playtech somehow gets the shot off over a couple of defenders on the baseline to give him the lead. And then look at this, Dick. Look how close this one was. Wow. Unbelievable. It's amazing that he got that shot off, Dan. It's amazing. Playtech, they did a good job rotating defensively, but couldn't stop him. Carolina 67 and Miami 65 for Dick Vitale. I'm